I'm in my hotel the day that we're playing Washington, and I've been like, I've been using this this quotes that he said to start this season, and I'm actually just, I'm, I'm so ready for this game, like I can't sleep. And my phone rings in my room, and I'm like, I've never got a call in my room before. So I picked the phone up, it's Gil. You're right, I did call. Gil called, <laughs> he say, uh, you know, man, you know, the media. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to a very special edition of No Chill with Gilbert Arenas. I'm Mike Botticello. That's Gilbert Arenas over there. <laughs> we got a very special guest here today, but it's episode 100, Gil. We're going to uh -huh. pop some bottles. We got balloons. You got cakes. <laughs> bottles. We got, got balloons. It's I party. thought this was for me, though, when I walked and in. Also, I like, you're part of the show. <laughs> you're part of the show, so welcome to the show, Dwayne Wade. Thank you. Thank episode you. number one. Like it's a, it's a monumental mm -hmm. occasion, so we had to bring one. Yeah. Yeah. A, a big hitter. Um, and <laughs> a I'm big gonna, hitter? A big oh, okay. hitter. All right. And I'm going to say, Gil, man, this is the first time we've ever had. So I, I'm going to say this. You're probably the most photographed without a shirt on player in NBA history. Oh, really? <laughs> I really th I was thinking about it. <laughs> he said the most. I can't I think anybody. I'm, I'm, I'm turning that up in 2021, though. <laughs> I'm, I'm, yeah, I think JR is more known but You're for high fashion. Though. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm going to turn it up in 2021. I got more uh, shirtless <laughs> photos coming your way. But we're, we're talking like <laughs> GQ, Esquire, people, sexiest man alive. I mean, it's no joke. Yeah. I said hitters. <laughs> that, that's the stuff I'm thinking about. Yeah, you got to know the right people. That's all. I, just, I know the right people. Put me on those lists. Appreciate but then that. also, there's certain people that, you know, you got to have the goods when you take the shirt off. There's that one photo of you, I think, <laughs> from Slam. I remember, yeah, yeah, I remember yeah. when I was seeing it, I was like, he did that? Hey, can I get on something? Slam Magazine or something? He's on Esquire. He done got Sean John. I, I don't, oh, I gotta, yeah, Sean you know, I don't John. got nothing. Yeah, man. I need to go to Miami. I knew I should have went to Miami when it was offering me. There's a stat we're going we're gonna to kick this off with. Okay. 18 and 3. What does that mean to you? It don't really mean nothing. Shit, because it means a lot to him. Eight, you're wait, you're 18 and three when you guys go head to head. <laughs> I want 18. 18. <laughs> I was gonna say that, but I ain't wanna see. I ain't wanna come off cocky like that. But yeah, I, I'll probably yeah. Hey man. <laughs> hey, <laughs> yeah, I, I was gonna say that, but you know, 18 and three. What was Gil, the three games so we Gil, lost? Yeah, Gil, what happened? Um. Hmm. Oh, when you bring my nemesis there, Gil Payton. I was getting. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, that, that's 06? Yeah, he okay. was, yeah, he was, he was, he was. He was your nemesis. How old was he at that point? He was, it didn't he was, matter. He was like, how old I am right now yeah. sitting in this chair? Because what ends up happening is he bust, he bust my ass my rookie season. But he's still around, so you got so, him. Yeah, so I had to get him <laughs> back. And when he got to you guys, I was like, yes. Yeah. So we got A lot of people was coming for uh, yeah. the for, glove. Yeah, at yeah, the, yeah, yeah. They, <laughs> we were yeah. got too. But you were like, I'm going to kick his ass out the door. He's going to retire after this. Oh, okay, so we're going to back up, back up. 04, so 04, they go to the Olympics, right? Because this, this would actually stop my trash talking towards players. So 04, 04, the uh, USA team loses, right? So they're 3-0. They're and They start the season off 3-0. and We 2-0, you know? And, and they asked me a question, like, how are you going to stop the heat? Stop the heat. Nobody worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> so we haven't. So we haven't seen them yet. So I, I did it. Nobody worry about the heat, man. I said, listen, they got Dwayne Wade. We just gonna treat them like they just treated. Uh, like they was. At, they can't shoot. We just gonna sit on the zone. Bop. We good. Boop. Right. This is true. We in the locker room, right? So you know, like we got Brendan Haywood and them reading. It was like, uh, ooh. <laughs> he said, ooh. ooh. <laughs> He's like, you said this? I said, said what? You said uh, Dwayne Wade couldn't shoot, and we was. I was like, nobody reads the paper. You, you don't think he read that, do you? He was like, mm, we're about to find out. <laughs> <laughs> we, we go out of the game. Larry Hughes goes out for two minutes. He scores 16 points. <laughs> 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 or I go to the bench. I think he read all of that, bro. <laughs> <laughs> do not, 
Do not put me on that man no more, <laughs> brother. I am not. I done learned my lesson. Gave us 37 in like 27 minutes. Yeah. So, <laughs> lesson learned. My version. <laughs> so, I hear about what Gilbert say, you know, I'm not reading the papers, but someone tells me and I go look and I'm like, dang, came at me like that. Okay, so I mark on the calendar. Washington Wizards oh, game shit. four. <laughs> Big circle. Right? So, and then like uh, my first three games, I'm already probably like, I'm, I'm balling. Like I'm averaging probably 30 at this point, start of the season. And I'm in my hotel the day that we're playing Washington. And I've been like, I've been using this, this quotes that he said to start this season. And I'm actually just, I'm, I'm so ready for this game, like I can't sleep. And my phone rings in my room. And I'm like, I've never got a call in my room before. So I picked the phone up, it's Gil. You're right, I did call. Gil called, <laughs> he say, uh, you know, man, you know, the media. <laughs> <laughs> you said the shit. You know, how they, you know how they spend things, man. You know, that's not what I meant. So far, so on, whatever was said, and I'm like, I have to hang up the phone. I'm like, nope, you're not about to throw me off my shit. You're not about to throw me off. I'm going at Gilbert today. That's in my whole mindset. It was a Gilbert. It was about Gilbert. So I still keep that same mindset. So once Larry Hughes go out the game and they put Gilbert on me, I said, here we go. This is what I've been waiting on all summer. Yeah, I just remember, yeah, because I'm looking 3-0. and like, Ooh, 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 ooh. Oh, no, I got to defuse this. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> where that weight at? Yeah, <laughs> let me get that weight. I just remember I did call. I had no alias at the time. Well, I wasn't like well, nobody was checking for me yet. So I had no alias still yet. My ass <laughs> so like your conscience kicked in for a second, a quick second. No, yeah, because I wasn't hot rod then. Right. You know what I mean? I wasn't like it was like, you know how like we trying to start talking shit and we didn't know how it worked and you know so it was my first like yeah nah nobody worry about them and. Like, boop, and then I get smacked right in the mouth. That was the last time I ever said it. <laughs> I was like, nah, I don't want that kind of smoke. <laughs> I just do my own court stuff, say here and stuff, but that call them out in public, no, no. I learned my lesson. So what was that, one out of the 21 times? Oh, no, one no, no, it seemed like he just carried it on and just... Mm. Yeah, I did, I did. <laughs> it, was just, a, it was a Washington Wizards <laughs> thing. <laughs> <laughs> he, just, he just carried that on, <laughs> game after game after game. I mean, and then, too, it was a great place to play. I mean, at that time, Gil and them had it rocking up in Washington. So it was, you wanted to play there. It wasn't, mm. one, it wasn't quiet. It was, it was live in D.C. So it was, a great, it was a great showcase, too, to be able to perform. So every time we came there, it's what it felt like. He was like, oh, I'm in, I'm in the capital. I want yeah. to put on a, a show. Yeah, it's not that like for you, because you're a twin. <laughs> I actually love, like, the point guard was, it wasn't my favorite. The two was, when I got to, when they moved me over to the two, it just, um, for some reason, it just freed me up. It freed my mind up, it freed everything up. The point guard had me thinking, thinking too much. Thinking too much, yeah. And I mean, I'm, I'm, a, I'm not a thinker like that. Like, I could think the game, I know the game, but like, I don't like thinking, I like to react to, you know what I mean? I'm just, that's uh, natural. And so when I got to the two, I was like, oh, my shoulders got a little loose up. <laughs> this feel good, so I don't have to pass. Yeah, 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 yeah. What you're telling me, only if I want to. Two, okay, it's a different game now. <laughs> we were talking about that. Who in those early years was that person that like guided you to, to do that within the organization? Because before, thinking before Shaq got there, right? So mm -hmm. it was like you were, you were a young guy and it could have gone a lot of different ways. Mm -hmm. Obviously, Gil could have ended up there. Yeah. But for you, there was, who was it within the organization that drove that? Eric Spostra. Eric Spostra. Eric Spostra, before he became who he is now, Hall of Fame coach, he, when I got there, he was in a video room, mm -hmm. right? He started in the video room, so he would do the video. And then after we get done with practice, they'll send him upstairs to work out with me because I still, I needed to, a lot of work on my game. So Eric spoke, Coach Spoke would come up and he started working on me on my balance, start working on me on, you know, like contact and like finishing through contact and, you know, pushing me on my shots because, you know, back then you can have that hand on that hip and somebody go to shoot, you can, and that's, you can shove them. Yeah. And so I was getting in the lane and they were just pushing me yeah, all the yeah. way. And nobody, pushing you to the big man. No calls. <laughs> so it, he, had to, he had to train me and train my mind on that. So Coach Spo was so big, you know, he wasn't Coach Spo at the time, but Coach Spo eventually being, you know, obviously my head coach at one point, but he was very important uh, for me when I first came in for my development, you know, um, into the NBA. And so I give him a lot of credit for that. Yeah. I mean, what you saw with him at those at that point, because I know you size everybody up and you take your notes, was it the fact that 
he's going to be a problem if someone unlocks that. No, it was, you know, it was, it was, he was faster and quicker than what it seemed like. Like, you know, like you can watch somebody on TV and we're like, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. But when you get him in real time, mm -hmm. like, wait a minute, hold on. Hey, hold on. Why am I why am I guarding him? He's too strong. <laughs> like y'all was making it seem like he was too, he was 205. I'm too that is not a 205 right there. I don't know what that is. That is that is not the, this is not to say you're gonna have to put the big get back in here, Larry. You too I was skinny. Closer to for, 220. Yeah, I was like, Larry, yeah. you're too skinny for this man. Because I remember there was one play we was pushing, so we was like, all right, we're gonna. He's killing us going middle. Pushing baseline. Like, all right, push me. We're gonna. Push the baseline. Be there. All right? You go baseline and you spin out of that. Like this is <laughs> this is before like like you remember like creativity wasn't like when we it wasn't really creative like that. Yeah. Like, like now everyone's like creative. it wasn't like you coming in with the slight, there was none of that. Like AI had the the, the crossover, so you've seen that coming. So when people spin out of stuff, you didn't really, <laughs> you didn't really know what to do with it. So he went baseline and spit, boom! He can dunk off the spin too. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? what is this? He's, he's dunking off spins. He's dunking off splits. <laughs> Y'all can't guard this man to the basket. Y'all can't guard. Look, I'm fine with my man. But listen, I said some shit and he's making y'all pay for it. Okay? Like it was just one of those things. It's like, yo, he's like that's like it was one of those things, like you see the like the evolution, like. You know, like there's there's players that come in that's evolution. You can see it, and I'm, you can see like the explosion, the movement, and I'm like, yeah. well, I think that's both yeah, you guys. Not yeah. to, to, to cut you off, but think about him mm -hmm. where he was pulling up from, but, but beyond, like deep, deep. But, but my evolution is coming because I can't play this position, like so I'm evolving the point guard position because it's a disadvantage to them because they're not scores. You know, they're playmakers. They're forced to playmake. So me coming at them and the worst they can give me is 20. You know, I'm trying to give you 30. The worst you can do is 20. You know, it's different than you already see elite sh shooting guards and their explosion. They can give you 60. And then you you just <laughs> see just like, yo, what? what? Like, I got remember, I'm watching Jason Richardson. So I see what explosion looks like. This was different. Like, that's what I'm saying. You got... Euro stepping, you got Euro to the layup, Euro, and then Euro dunk. Like, wait, hold on, wait, hold on. Because I remember I was in Chicago, I'm like, all right, he, gonna, he steps, steps, and dunk. I, I, I can try it. All right, stand right there. <laughs> I can try it. <laughs> ooh, ooh. Hey, Grover, what, what leg stuff you, <laughs> what leg stuff he got to do? I got, what I got to do to get to that? Because it was like, it was yeah, just, I don't... everything that was doing, it was just the finishing. I'm like, yo, how does he still have this kind of bounce after doing all this movement? It was just unreal. It was just, it was unreal. Yeah, I always say, like, I feel like the one thing I never got credit for is my creativity. You know what I mean? Like, I think I was, I think I kind of, not evolute, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't start it, but I feel like when I came in in my position, no one was doing the creative things that I was doing at the size that I am. And then, like you said, finishing it with a, you know what I mean? And so I was a very creative player and it wasn't that I made it all up, but I watched what someone did and I figured out a way to put my own spin to it. And I always said, I didn't have a go-to move. Like I had so many in my repertoire of my career, I had so many different moves and it all comes from just creativity of understanding position, understanding the space I needed, understanding that um, Brandon Haywood is too slow. If I come off this pick and roll and he's coming, he's too slow. You know what I mean? And I know that. I know his feet is too slow. So I'm coming off this pick and roll. Whoop, I'm gone because his job is to cut me off. I'm like, come and cut me off. Thank you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And so it was, I was very creative as a player. And I, I feel like I never got the credit for how creative I was, you know, <clears throat> playing a game of basketball. But a lot of that too is you have it in your bag and you're reacting too. So mm -hmm. it's like whatever they, not really, that's very rare too. Guys don't have all these things like, I got a counter for your counter. Show me this with Brandon Hayward. Okay, that's what I wanted. Thank you. Like there was, there was like, there was two people that I said, you know, on pick and rolls, it was just, they were just, in, they were impossible. You and Jamal Tinsley. Like, Jamal Tinsley was nice. I was like, you, like, I was like, it was, like, I remember, I was like, what are we even, what are we even doing on the pick and roll? There's nothing to do. 
hard show, under show. Like, he was here, and now he's over there. Like, we, we still to this day didn't know what you were doing. <laughs> we were like, is he, is he carrying? <laughs> hey, ref, he's carrying, ref. He is like, he comes and boop. Oh, I definitely carried a lot. But Oh, yeah. It was. But, <laughs> but don't it was, call it. No. But because where you started from, you was allowed to come up. So that's what the ref told me. Yeah, okay. They said because he's starting in a crouch position, when he comes out of it, yeah. he's allowed that space. Yeah. So I'm like. Yeah, because I got real low. Low. And yeah, so you're yeah, real low. So real you're low. here. So when you're coming I'm coming up, up. Yeah. it's not considered. Because I used to throw that joint yeah, over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I seen doing that? So when I got in, I was looking. Jason Kidd. I watched Jason Kidd get away with so many carries. Jay Kidd, I love you. <laughs> yeah. I watched Jason Kidd get away with so many carries. I was like, okay, all right. So when I get to that level of respect, I'm <laughs> carrying the hell out of this ball. Boy, when I got to that level, I was. <laughs> 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 but go, getting low, well, Tom Cream, my, my college coach, shout out to Tom Cream. Uh, that's what he taught me in practice. And, and I didn't know what he was doing. I'm, he was like, this shoulder needs to be on that ground. Like that's how low you need to get. And so the workouts to do that, to, to bend my legs and get my knees and all that down there to do that was grueling. And but eventually once it, once I figured it out, and then I realized like, oh, can't no once I get low, can't nobody get back in front of me. Mm -hmm. And so then it became a part of my game. And I was thinking that too, it's a product of your environment. And I gotta tell you, a lot of times we give a lot of credit to L LA, LA Hoopers, you know, a lot of activity. He doesn't really like New York Hoopers, will <laughs> not give them any respect. Understand that was <laughs> a just, different it's, era. It's, just, it's an outdated market. That's yeah, just, that's he said it's an outdated market. They haven't, they haven't they had been, their time. They haven't been producing. Yeah, they, they, they had their time for sure. They but, have, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, but I'm gonna say <laughs> Chicago. Oh, yeah. No, yeah, Chicago got, they got bouncing. Chicago has been, like Chicago's been pretty consistent just, too. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like we didn't like, I don't feel like we ever fell off. Like LA has came with like everything. I mean, they got, it's about 1200 dudes from the, from LA and the NBA. <laughs> like, you know, they, they got it, especially right now. But like, I feel like Chicago, we just, we've always produced great players and it's been consistent over the years. You know what I'm saying? So, but it's a different style. Like Oz is tough and rugged and, yes. you know, LA is a little different. Flashy. Yeah, just yeah, it's a little yeah, that's what, <laughs> it's a little turn around, shoot, walk yeah, down the court, yeah, yeah, hit a game with it like this. Like, yeah, could you have ever done that with no, Tom Green? No, I need to see mine go through. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I wasn't. I ain't had that kind of. I ain't had that kind of shot neither. I couldn't. I ain't had a confidence like he shot. I remember watching that man. I remember seeing him shoot that game with a turn around to the crowd, and it, and the, and he's messed up a lot of people's career doing that because Nick Young tried it. <laughs> <laughs> Kimba, Kimba, Sorry, Nick. Kimba walked away like this and it didn't go in. So, but that was Steph, epic. Yeah, Steph turned it into a whole nother, a whole nother thing. Like it was, yeah. it was a whole yeah. nother. Yeah, it's, it's Steph, it's, Steph evolved it. Yeah, but evolved you're, you're it. saying the point is like when you, uh, I'm thinking of that play when you blocked the shot, came down, pulled up, like time expired, and you hit, the, you know, in Miami and this uh -huh. Miami, like yeah. the celebration, everyone wants th those moments. Yeah. You're just, you were uh, yeah, but the celebration yeah. first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, the, it was just the confidence at that time. You know, it's it's um, it's this thing. I it's it, we were competing so much, like with the it was the youth competing that this is what happened. Someone said um, it was the youth compete. Someone was like, uh, "Yeah, man, Ray Allen, first ballot Hall of Famer." So I was like, Ray Allen. Ray, 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 Ray. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, you know, 2005, six, seven, when was Ray Allen? I had to really go to Google and realize we removed. <laughs> he said we removed. Because <laughs> you got to remember, by your, it was your second year you all starred, mm -hmm. right? which was my fourth year, I all starred, LeBron's second year. Mm -hmm. Young, young, young. Mm -hmm. We done already, there's three spots in the all-star game <laughs> for young guys, and you and LeBron starting. Right. So where was, it was like, where, wait, hold on. He was, he was there, he did what? Because by his, by, by some of those veterans, they're at 26, 7, 8, they were already removed out of the all-star game. Mm. I didn't even think about that. Cause I'm over here, so I'm looking at like, and then I was like, oh, 
all NBA eliminated. Because I was like, oh, no, all, he wasn't on all NBA team. Because I was third. It was me and Chauncey one year, and then me and AI or me and Dwayne one year, and then it was Dwayne, Dwayne, Dwayne. I don't know where he would have been. Because on the other side, it was Kobe. Kobe. Yeah. You know, Kobe, what's the name, what's the name? And then yeah. it was realized he only made it twice. Ray? Yeah. All NBA? Twice. Over his whole career? <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's why I said it was just weird. Like, listen, I'm like, yeah, I was, you know, I'm over here trying to compete with Dwayne, LeBron, and then, you know, when... But when we got when we got in the league, Ray had moved on from... He moved to Seattle. Yeah. And they, they didn't have a good team at that time. I mean, Ray was still putting out... Like, he had a couple 50s. He was putting out buckets on people here, but... They they didn't have a great team. Like Rashard Lewis was young. Yep, yep. Um, yeah, Luke Rittenauer at the point. Yep. You know, they didn't have they a watch, great yeah. team. So he kind of got lost for a while in not having a great team until the trade sent him to Boston. Then now Ray came yeah. back. That's yeah. what it was. He kind of got lost in the sauce of the new excitement, the young guys, and him playing in Seattle where well, he was giving numbers, but he is in the West. Yeah, I was like, that West. <laughs> well, the, the funny thing that you say there is when he got to Boston, right? He put that team together because he was in Seattle, West Coast. You know, people forget about games on the West Coast, let's be honest. So he knew, like, if I get my window is closing, if I get a shot, I got to go to a team like But Boston, even in like, the East, if everyone stayed healthy, I mean, got to remember, Vince Carter gets pushed out of Vince Carter got pushed out of the NBA All Star game. You're, we're All Stars at 23. Mm -hmm. So I start, I remember I was a, I took him out. When I beat him, that was 2006 7 All Star. So that was a 2006 7 All Star. So if he's only 42 right now, back then he was only 30, 29 when he got taken out. I mean, yeah, he was still, he was still so in his prime. Yeah, he, was still in his prime. Was, he was just in his prime. Yeah, I mean, Vince stayed in his prime for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> so he just retired. He didn't need to. Like, <laughs> Vince stayed so it was in like, for a long it was time. Like, it, was, it was quick how young kids just took over. But you know what, too, what happened in the game? The game shifted, right? Like, so right now we watch, right? We watch Steph Curry shift the game, mm -hmm. right? So you watch players shift. When we came in, the game shifted. And when it shifted, it shifted into uh, specialties, right? It shifted mm -hmm. to, they took the hands off, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> the rules changed, and now we got free. And then it became where pick and rolls was the thing. Vince wasn't a pick and roll player. Ray wasn't a pick and roll player, so forth and so on. So now the game changed to watching us and our excitement and what we were doing. Our numbers could have been the same, mm -hmm. but the fans start loving what we were doing. And you gotta understand like what Gilbert did, which a lot of people don't talk about is the NBA has, we have rules. Before, it wasn't, guys weren't coming at you pulling up at three like that. That wasn't a game when I first got in. Gilbert was coming at you full steam ahead and then he'll stop and pull up at three. Well, our rules is to pick a guy up, your toes at the three point line, not heels over the three point line. So he coming down full steam, I'm like, oh, he coming. And he's er, and you're like, hmm, what are you doing? And he just started stopping. Pull that wasn't the rules. So like we had to now change our rules to say, oh, hey, heels above the three-point line. You got to pick a guy up. Just those small things that fans don't know. But like he took advantage of the rules. James Harden took advantage of the rules. Like to me, those players that take advantage of the rules are so smart. Uh, I mean, I eventually took advantage of the rules. That's why I got so many free throws. Like, I took advantage of it wasn't vertical at the time. <laughs> so if a, you jump into a big man, it's a foul on him. Yep. Mm -hmm. it, that was the rule, so I took advantage of it. You know? they, cha they changed it by 2008. It changed the whole they, game, they, too. And that's what they said. They said they, they got two headhunters, Gilbert and Dwayne, and they said they're, they're, they're seeking bodies and not seeking baskets. That's true. That's the game. So now I'm like, okay, guys are shooting at the logo. Where are we going next? Who, who about to pull up from behind at half court? <laughs> who about to come back like half court and be like, like, like LaMelo did in high school? Who about to start doing that? Because like, where are we going? <laughs> well, I think, I mean, it's, it's bigs like Jokic, guys that are going to, bigs that can bring the ball to the floor. Mm -hmm. So they're like, damn, if I had to guard a big man now. And also, where it's going is getting younger. That's really what it is. Because four-year players coming out of college, less and less of those. And it's all these young guys. And if you're an older player, eventually the game's gonna evolve. And that's why I think that's why LeBron's so impressive, right? For a lot of reasons. But like his thing, he's always added things to survive. Listen, okay, I gotta, I got we gotta have this conversation about LeBron. Uh -huh. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Take a sip first. Is LeBron the best he's ever been right now? I think so. And I think I think because because he's getting slower, 
and the athleticism is going down just a little bit. Yeah. Just, just, just a little bit. Just, just a little, just, just a little yeah. bit. He has to think more. He has to play the game smarter, wiser. You know, so something most people had to do at like a 31, 30. He's doing it now. Right. So instead of just using his brute strength like he was when he was younger, he has to be wiser now. Yeah. So I think, you know, this yeah. is like his best basketball. Like yeah. Or just overall. Watching him the other night, obviously went back to Cleveland, hit up 40-something, 40 46. But I was watching the way he played the game. And I got a chance to see him at what we think was his best LeBron in 2012. We feel mm -hmm. like that was the best LeBron that we've seen, right? And it was at times where maybe everybody on the outside or even inside, you were frustrated because you were like, Bron, just do, just, just do that. <laughs> yeah, 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 just, yeah. Just take a guy to the block. And there were certain things he just wouldn't do at, at certain times. And so now I watch his game and I say, does he have a weakness in his game? And I start from the rim all the way back to half court. He can do everything. But no, let's take it even back. Let's take it all the way back from the rebound. Mm -hmm. Right? He does everything now. So now he's good at everything. He's shooting high 40 and three points now. And his range is out to the logo. Mm -hmm. Right? You know he's mid-range. He can post you up. He can face you up. He's still going to dunk on you. He can, he, he's, his ability to see the floor now is so much It's better now because he's seen every coverage. Like, it's at the point now where I'm like, I'm looking at this guy and say, I've never seen nobody get better at 36 yeah. years old. Like, this, this doesn't happen. And I feel like this is the best, as a fan now I'm watching, I think this is the best LeBron that I've seen. And it's not, he's That's not jumping one. over, hitting yeah. his elbow on the rim. <laughs> he's just hitting his right here on the rim now, you know? And, but it's changed, but he's, bro, I've never seen this before. Like, this is that he's more, com it was funny, he's more complete. Yeah, he's more complete. He's That's, more complete. There you go. He's well, because complete. in other sports, I, Tom Brady might be the exception too, but when you get older, you get smarter because you got yeah. more experience. But then physically, yeah, you're on the deep and he line. didn't lose that. So no, when, when I got older, spent a million I was dollars like, to take care of his body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dang, I wish I could just. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I see it. So he didn't lose. He didn't. He didn't lose his athleticism and take care of his body. Like he does an amazing job. But the man above said, "Boom, yeah. you're blessed. Uh -huh. it, let's get away from that. Take care of your like." He does it. He spends a lot of money. I know a lot of people who do it uh -huh. and spend a lot of money and it didn't work. You know what I <laughs> mean? The man above said, "I'm gonna get you everything but a headline. Yeah, I'm yeah, just gonna yeah, get yeah, you everything." But a headline. That's my guy. I always talk. <laughs> but he has it, and so now he's unlocked it all. He has no. It's nothing in his mind. He don't think. Like, he don't think about shooting a logo pull up. Because he doesn't have, like back when he was even in his prime, when he was the best MVP, he still had a lock in certain mm -hmm. things, whether it was in his three-point shot or whether it was in his free throw, whatever it is. He doesn't have a lock anymore. The only thing that he ain't doing is shooting 100, shoot 90% from the free throw line. That's the only thing left for this man to do. Mm -hmm. Outside of that, he can do everything else on the floor. And I'm just trying to think what unlocked it. Was it the Cleveland team when he had to do more himself? Hmm, that's a good question. Probably when it... I it started unlocking every year he won. Yeah, every year you've seen when you've he seen won. When he won, now that monkey gets off his back. Now he relaxes going you into the and next gives year, you more of that freedom. Trying a little bit, trying some things that he didn't try the year before. You win your second championship. Okay, he's going to start doing some different stuff. Then he goes in, gets the monkey off his back in Cleveland. Then you just start seeing just more outspoken, different guy. You just see the evolving. You know, before it was more sheltered. You know, more of, you know, it's more of a shelter. Got to worry about what I say. You know, you know, I'm already, I'm already getting criticized for leaving. Like I remember when I watched him say the um, his decision. Oh, you can see that that was a scared. No, that was oh, a scared. tight. That was a yeah. scary Super move. Tight. Like, like he, it was like he had to say it to himself twice to make sure he said it. Like, yeah, I'm going. I'm going to take my talents to Miami. I'm gonna take my talents to Miami. Like it was like it was just he was trying to convince. This him. how nervous he was. He said South Beach. First yeah. of all, I'm <laughs> yeah. playing South Beach. <laughs> that's how nervous you know. Yeah, what that's what yeah. But it was one of like so you can see like that nervous guy to the, who he is now. Just the battle. And then know? too, as you get older, we watch we watch guys before. It's like we used, me and Brown would watch Kobe, and we would watch Kobe interviews. And when he got older, he just didn't give a yeah. fuck. Yeah. And we were like. Can't wait to get to that yeah, age. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and now Brian's at the age where not, not only do he he don't care what you say because you're gonna say what you're gonna say, but now he's he's now he he comes with he's polished. He comes with the information and the knowledge that he needs, not only in basketball, which we know is another level, but now he has it from a in, in a from a world standpoint now, you know, when it comes to everything he's doing in his foundation and and more than a vote and all those things. So now he's he brings the polish with with the education with it and also the I don't give a mm -hmm. So I'm gonna be like when he came out and said, I'm 
I think that put me on as the greatest. Nobody would have said that. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> says that. You don't know. He's like, I don't care. This is what I feel. I feel like that made me the greatest. And that's his right to say that. It's what do he say? I want, I want my damn respect, too. Yeah. Because yeah. look at, yeah, numbers don't lie. Look at the resume. What else are you going to say about it? Yeah, you know, that, that I, I always, like, when people's like, man, that was the easiest championship. I said, technically, technically, that is the hardest championship because it's LeBron and the Lakers. Now, when you think about the fan base of a Laker team and LeBron team, every arena they would have went in, he was fan favorite. You know what I mean? So when you're in a bubble, it took... It took the fans' favorite out of them. Now you don't get booed at your own home. <laughs> because when, when somebody in your ear talking about your mama, yep. when they booing you, when somebody behind and it's loud and it's the energy and it's all white in the arena and it's, it changes the free throw that you shoot. But even that, what you're saying, to be able to turn that volume down, I think that was the thing that you guys did when he came there, obviously you probably saw, like, well, this is way different than it was in Miami, right? Mm -hmm. Like, it took us up another level. Yeah. But that first year, like, you guys were villains, and you're like, wait, this isn't what you guys, we expected, right? Yeah, no, we, no, not like that. <laughs> no, you know, we, we expected some of it. We, we didn't expect that, no, not at all. But it, it made us, like, it, it, it took the fun out of basketball. You know what I'm saying? Like, being, trying to play the villain, it just took the joy away from the game. And even though we still were good and, you know, all that kind of stuff, we didn't have fun in that first year. Because we were like, all right, we're going to show them. Like, you can't, that's not the way you go through an entire year. You know what I'm saying? And But it was fun. I mean, I got some great stories and great memories from, like, <laughs> talking shit in the arena to the fans back and forth. But at the end of the day, like, it was all love because we knew everybody was there to see us. You know, at the end of the day, you can say what you want, but... Y'all here, y'all bought these tickets early. <laughs> early. You ain't get these tickets for the last five minutes because they couldn't sell seats. No, you got, you was like, oh, let me get the heat. Okay. Yeah. We knew that. We knew y'all were there for us. So, you know, the hate, yes, it it, it kind of drove us in the wrong. We should have, we, we didn't place it right. You know, if we would have placed the hate in the right spot, in the right place, then, you know, we could still have joy plan. But, you know, we took everything that people were saying about us and, you know, we took it personal. And we kind of, we was like this the whole year. And once we got to the time of winning time, we couldn't perform the way we needed to perform because we were tight. You know what I mean? Just being honest, we were all, we were tight. And we didn't, none of us performed the way we wanted to. Like everyone talks about LeBron not performing the way that he should have. He didn't, and he knows that. But I didn't perform the way I should in the last couple games. Like I was, no one can guard me out there. Love Jason Kidd, but he was 35. He shouldn't have been able to guard me. I should have, okay, Brian, you ain't having a good game. I should have had 45. Like it's just that, like, but we were so tight. And so, you know, we allowed that hate in that season to really, in 2010, to really affect yeah, that the way was we big, performed. Yeah, that was big hate, too. Cause, um, that was real. Oh, that was real Because I remember when, we, when we, we, were, we were playing you guys in the season, you guys were, what, 8-8. Eight and eight. And my whole we, thing... We started, yeah. Yeah, because we whole, started 9 and 8 before we went on a winning streak. Yeah, because my whole thing... Yeah, because <laughs> the 9 came against us. Because <laughs> he <laughs> was 8-8, eight and, eight and I was like, listen, 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 listen. This is our best chance to get him. Their lineup is a little funky. They got LeBron at the actual three. You know, we've been playing him. He don't, that's not his position. They got Mike Bibby at the point. All right, so listen, while they're still a little bit off, before they realize, <laughs> just, <laughs> before they realize, well, they figure this out. <laughs> we need to hurry up and try to get a win, right? Nope. Boop, get smacked, get smacked first five minutes. He subs us. He basically calls it game. <laughs> he going game, bro. <laughs> he been, coach subs, he just subs the whole five out. And I'm on the man like, come on, God damn it, man. Already, <laughs> we already give it up. You look at the score down 19. Yeah, we already give it up, <laughs> man. Game up already. already give it up, man. Where the cheerleaders at? Just, just watch the cheerleaders. <laughs> they about to go on a run now. They done figured it out. And that's what he, Yo, how about everybody? How about we first got to leave? Everybody used to be like this at our cheerleaders. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the game over here. Everybody's like, we was like, we got them. Let's go. Let's make the run. They ain't focused. <laughs> hey, we was like, hey, are they doing this on purpose, bro? Are they doing the cheerleaders on purpose? Because our cheerleaders don't look like this. Because <laughs> one day our coach was like, hey, Rook, y'all rookies, look at this. Time out. Man, what? <laughs> Yo. Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the NBA's Rooks. I didn't want nothing. I just wanted y'all to see. <laughs> Yeah, what, no. what it do here? <laughs> yeah, no, it was it was special. It was special. So that was what, like, fifteen of the eighteen that you took? <laughs> huh? That that game it was like 15, 18 and three. 
No, 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 no. That was like, yeah. No, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it, was, it was another loss. It was, it was, it was you another. know what's funny? That, that's kind of human nature, though, if you think about it. In my, in my head is like, when someone presses you or comes at you, naturally, you're going to want to defend yourself. So that's why you guys were like that. Like, all yeah. right, you guys are, you know, we're the bad guys here. All right, yeah, we're the bad guys. We're right. going to respond to you like that. Mm-hmm. But then it took going through that to the next year to when you do finally win. It was like, that wasn't who we were. Mm-hmm. And we're not going to go anywhere if that's who we continue to be. Yeah, I mean, we and then too, like, I mean, we've talked about this before too. It's great putting great talent together because, you know, we're sitting in Brooklyn right now, putting three guys together. But it does come a time it is a freedom in not having to like worry like oh is he going is he going to take the is he going to shoot do, do oh he need to get some shots he it, so we had that you know what i mean think about it in the day of Bron come down and him and cb playing their game and it's been 7 minutes and d wade ain't touched the ball <laughs> my breathing going to change a little bit and now Bron see that now he like i got to get so once we came back the next year too and it was like listen hey Bron, hey you the best this is you run the show it took, a, it took a lot of thought out of him, too, because he's coming to Wade County. Mm-hmm. And so I know he looked over his shoulder a few times like, okay, this D-Wade need to, D-Wade need to, instead of just playing basketball. Like, he doesn't, he don't do that anymore. Mm-hmm. Like, even though AD needs to get the ball, he don't necessarily, he don't have that same, like, it's not that same thing of coming to Miami mm-hmm. and it's being Wade County and him feeling like possibly, all right, I got to get this guy, ball. I got to get ID, he ain't, he ain't mad. So once we cleared that out in the next year and said, listen, you're the best player in the game. You're going to lead us to the championship. We're just going to do what we need to do. It cleared him up, freed everybody up, and then there we go. Now we go three straight finals, and we went two of the three. And, you know, great career. we had a great career in those four years. That's somebody's yeah. career right there yeah, in those yeah, four yeah, years, yeah. which we went to the finals four times. So, yeah, for sure. That's, that's the most, like, people don't understand that when you're putting teams together, it, it, names is good. That's mm-hmm. a good starting point, but meshing is the most important. Like, yeah. And you know, I had I was saying it last year at the beginning, and I said the the Clippers can't win because no one has came out and said, "Hey, you're the man. Mm. You're the man. We're gonna go by your lead." I said, "Lakers and already did that." Mm-hmm. I said, "Lakers and already did that. They already know the pecking order of what's going on. This side hasn't." So. There's going to be some. There's going to, when it gets yep. tough. There's going to be some Great battling point. here because no one's came out. You're you're not accepting the new guy. The new guy's trying to fit in. You're like, ah, oh, that's my team. Still, like, you, you know, there's no pecking order. And if you don't have a pecking order, then when that court happens and someone's not getting the ball, it's going to be felt more. Like I already, I told them. You know, I used to tell my team, hey, listen, when I get on the heater. Just, just let me know that someone didn't get the ball because I am not paying attention or just call some plays. And I know when you call plays, Eddie, that means you want me to pass the ball because none of the plays was basically meant for me. <laughs> <laughs> the plays. <laughs> so for people be like, yo, do you know any plays besides uh, one four flat? I know. <laughs> no, I do not know no plays besides one four flat means I, it's my time. Ooh, like one four. When I coach said, call that, you be like. But we're, you're not going to get hot water now, but it's your turn. And you're the media pro right now, so we're going to put you on, on the clock. Okay. Uh, ask Agent Zero time. Uh, well, my question definitely my mind has changed throughout. But, <laughs> I, you know, I, I think the thing, and, and Gil noticed, like, we, you know, obviously having, you know, mutual uh, friends and relationships, we're able to be in each other's presence and we have conversations. And I'm the kind of person where I look at Gil, I'm like, yo, you are a genius. Like, like, in a, he is. He's a, he's a he's a genius in the, in in his genius, right? In his lane, always. So my question for him was always will always be and is always. I I always feel like I don't, Gilbert is so good at what he's good at that I feel like don't ever settle. And so my thing always for Gilbert is like, what's next for Gilbert Arenas? Because he can do amazing things with his talents, right? With his his ability to storytell. His ability to to remember things, his ability to know everything about everything, right? Like he he's so he's such a smart individual. So my question for him would be like, what's next? Like where what's the vision? You know, NBA was the was the was the thing for you. Uh-huh, uh-huh. What's your NBA in now in this life? 
Uh, before you answer that, I just I had I I didn't mean to laugh, but I actually did mean to laugh because when you said genius, because be careful what you just put out there. Now he's gonna say I'm a genius. I mean, I yeah, already knew that. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's levels to geniusness. <laughs> I mean, it's levels, but he's a he is he's he's qualified. To me, he's qualified as like you know. I mean, he has he has genius. You know what I mean? It's just that sometimes you gotta filter through. Mm -hmm. Certain the, the the armor on the outside to get to the genius, but he has genius inside him. So I and when I see that, and my thing will always be to him would be that is, what is your NBA now? Like what what how are you gonna take the genius that you have been gifted with and really match it up to that? Which would be hard, but what is that thing? The true answer is I have no idea. Okay, that's the true answer because I it, all I loved was basketball. Right, all I cared for was basketball. That's all I can, you know. So now, you know, once I took on the challenge of coaching, it's, do I even know how to do this? Like, you know, now I need to but get to what? the NBA again. Do you know how to do what? Coach. What about coaching? What do you mean? Is it X's and O's? That's what, that, that's what I'm trying to figure out. Like, because I have to go into it like, like, okay, there's the NBA of coaching. Mm -hmm. I'm here. I need to learn every single thing mm -hmm. before I can even, you know, so I'm trying to figure out, like, how do I start from ground zero? You know, play calling, uh, challenging old methods versus what my brain tells me is better. Mm -hmm. um, you know, sitting in how to structure a practice. How do you do a game tape? Um, scouting reports, you know, I'm trying to figure out like watching game from a coaching side versus a player side, you know, you know, I used to watch a game like this. Now I got to watch it like this. Way and, different. You know, so that's where I'm trying to figure out. That's where I'm stuck at. Like, I know I want to coach, trying to figure out which level, which level does my brain will help these kids. So when you were trying to figure out like NBA was the goal. Mm -hmm. When you were young, you were trying to figure out how to get there. Mm -hmm. What did you do? Trained. How did you train? Anywhere. Uh, right? So, see so, that Jedi mind. Jedi. You know what I mean? So, like, that's the thing. It's like, and that's how I think. It's like, okay, like, the things, you became, you reached the pinnacle of not only a sport, but, like, where everybody dreams are going. Like, every kid... Even, I'm, I don't know if you played basketball yeah, when you were young, but you probably yes, wanted to play. Yes and yes. Okay, yeah, sure, right? Sure. Most kids are trash. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you reached the pinnacle of that, and so you know what it takes. You have already unlocked that. Okay, you've unlocked stuff that people can't unlock. They haven't unlocked yet in their life. So you unlocked that, that you know that, hey, I, could, I can do something incredible. I can do something great. Now you know what it takes. Mm -hmm. You just go back and you just do the, you, you, you apply the same principles to that, that's what the mom, to me, that's what mama mentality was. Yes, he did it on the court, and we seen what that was, but he just said mama mentality goes for everybody, right? It's even in your everyday as a parent, your everyday is what you do in your job, and Kobe was all about mama mentality is what? Work, work more, work more, whatever his, men, mama, whatever his mentality was on the court became the mama mentality that became a life mentality. Mm -hmm. So you already have what it takes to get to so all you got to do is put that dream out there like you did NBA. Now you work to get there. So you put it out there. I want to be coach, whatever. Now you go through that same work at this and that same path to get there. Ain't no shortcuts. Yeah. Not for this. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm just keeping it real with you. And, I'm, and it's not a race thing, but it's no shortcuts when you're African-American in, in, in America. Mm -hmm. So you can't shortcut and say, like some people, like a lot of, I see a lot of us former players, I see us waiting for that handout. Yep. It's not, it's not coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, they've shown us that it's not coming. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can't shortcut it. Now you got to do it the way that you did it to get to the NBA if you're going to reach that pinnacle like you did. And I think you have the genes to do that. So that was my, my question. I guess we'll wrap up. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to pop this bottle. And uh, while I do that, well, first of all, episode 100. <laughs> Officially. Ooh! Um, I brought a gift too. We got a gift. So we should, we should, <laughs> we should shout out Wade Sellers. This is the real stuff. Right? Yeah, this is, this is a nice. This. Wait, hold on. What is that? Well, this was champagne. It's more symbolic. I feel like that is that a. That's for us a toast. That's for a toast. This is just a gift. Yeah, and okay. so I know, my, I know my friend Gilbert don't drink wine, but 
he got a nice house so guests come over. Exactly. <laughs> With that being said, I thought I'd bring him, you know, a bottle of wine because I brought him a bottle before. But I thought I'd bring him another bottle as a gift for thank. Thanks for having me on the show. Uh, thank you for and bringing for, hey, hey, 100. Hey, hey. Like the fact that I got to be over here for 100, man, I appreciate thank that. Thank you for coming. Thank you. And, well, uh, actually, before we go, I want to, um, the one thing I do want to hey, know about. Oh, I'm going to need this back. Jump no. cut that out, but like I gave it to him. <laughs> you take the wine out. Let me get that box. <laughs> yes, <sir. laughs> um, one thing I did hear about, and I this, this kind of visual blew my mind. But he told me a few years ago that he was babysitting your kids. Mm, yeah. And like driving them to the mall and yeah, games Zaya, that we Zaya and Zaya and Gil was like. <laughs> yeah, this was like, was like maybe. Zaya? She with Gil, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Just like that. Psychopath. She with Gil. Just like that. So the idea of Gilbert Arenas as a babysitter. Listen, I'm going to tell you, Gilbert has a soft side, right? You know what I mean? That, it, that a lot of people can't see. It's hard for him to even see it. But. Kids, you can see it when it comes yeah, to kids. Yeah, like kids. the way he were, the way he was with my daughter Zaya, and even before, I'm sure Zaya shared things with Gilbert mm-hmm. that she didn't share with me. Mm-hmm. And so the way he was with her, and 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 I and I, my, me and my family, we talk about this a lot. But the way, even publicly, like Gil, anytime Zaya posts something, anytime he posts something about Zaya, Gilbert gonna comment on it, mm-hmm. right? He's a he's been a big supporter and a big fan of hers way before the world knew Zaya mm-hmm. and knew anything about Zaya, right? Gilbert was one of the first ones to like really show her that love from a black man. You know what I'm saying? That she probably was afraid to even get from me. Mm-hmm, yeah. You know what I mean? At, at one point. So like, I yeah, appreciate what's that. What's funny is we had, the, we had a conversation and the conversation was, what do you fear the most? That was, and it was, it wasn't Zaya yet. So right. it, still, it was still Zaya. Still Zaya. <laughs> and I was like, what do you fear? The, what do you fear the most? And thought about it. That when I'm ready, they won't support me. Mm. Oh, you good then? I said you you good then? They they they're supporting. You. They're just waiting for you. And then from there, you can just see the relief, mm-hmm. the relief, the relief come out. And I was like, okay. And I didn't want to tell you guys. I was like, I, I just wanted to be natural. Right, that yeah. was the thing that I. Yeah. You know, are they? And it was just you know it was just that, that's the not, not the world it didn't about the world. <laughs> She didn't give two fucks about the world. Right. I was like, I just want to make sure that, you know, are they going to be okay? Nobody would expect that. Yeah, right? yeah. Zaya went to Gilbert, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> now, 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 pick up the single people <laughs> that you could have. Now, pick up the single <laughs> space of Fortnite. <laughs> so, yeah, man, for sure. Well, cheers. Cheers, cheers to you, Gil. Cheers, cheers to you, Gil. To, cheers to you, D. Cheers to 100 episodes. For No Chill Gil, I'm Mike Botticello. This has been No Chill with Gilbert Arenas. Remember, you can catch us every Monday, 8 p.m. Eastern on the Fubo Sports Network, and we'll see you next time.